So I just received the new game elements for this season from Andy Mark, which is really exciting. But before we get too deep into the setup of the field, there's one thing that we should do first, which is to take a full inventory of all of the pieces we received in the two boxes that you can expect if you ordered a full field set. Because it's kind of a bummer if you get halfway through the setup and it turns out you don't have everything you need. And at that point, all the pieces are strewn everywhere, so you may actually not have the confidence that you didn't just misplace something. So when it comes to doing an inventory, this is a time when I actually like to print something out, which is very rare. Specifically, I like to print out the portion of the field setup guide that lists all of the pieces out so that I can physically check them off as I set eyes of, on them as I'm opening up both of the boxes. And a lot of people recommend printing out a copy of the full field setup guide and keeping it with the field itself so that if you're setting up the field somewhere that doesn't have internet, for example, you always have the guide that you need to get it set up. So let's go ahead, do the tedious work, and dive in with a full inventory. It always goes by so much faster as a time lapse, but luckily everything's checked off. I have all the pieces I need to get started with building the actual field. There were just a few things that kind of caught me along the way. The first is a piece called the Euroboard Upright. It comes in red and or blue, depending on if you get a half field or a full field. It wasn't immediately clear what I was looking for because it comes with this white plastic film on it and you can't quite see the red or the blue until you start to peel it off. So just be aware of that. And the other item to notice is that the peanut bar, this guy right here, shows up multiple times in the list of parts because it's part of both the center assembly and the corner assemblies. So you'll need to add up the total amount of them that you're expecting. You probably didn't get extra, it's just that it's part of two different sections of the field, so they divided it into two different parts of the list. And of course, you'll find that plenty of pieces are in multiple bags or divided between multiple bags, especially if they're pieces that you would only get some of for a half field and double of for a full field. It's probably in two different bags, so you'll have to add up the total amount when you find them. It's definitely worth it to do this sort of inventory because even though it's tedious and time consuming and you're excited to get into the actual first setup of the field, it would be a huge bummer to get halfway through and find out you don't have everything you need. So I encourage you to do the inventory, take the time, contact Andy Mark if you are missing any pieces. For me, now, it's time to get to the actual field setup. Overall, the setup of the field isn't too bad, but there are a few things that you should pay attention to. The first one is if you went and downloaded the field setup guide on the day of kickoff, you may want to go and download it again. Andy Mark have made some revisions to it and included some additional guidance on steps you should take to deal with sharp edges that occur on the submersible. Also related to the submersible, unfortunately this season sees the return of rubber stoppers being pushed into plastic tubing. If you were around for the power play season, you may remember how much of a pain these could be to set up. I did get a tip though that may help you in your journey, and that is to just dip your finger into some water and run it around the inside of the pole before you get started, and then that may help the rubber stopper to get in there more easily. I haven't tried this myself, but maybe it'll help you. The rest of my advice relates to constructing the corner bucket assemblies. Now most of the things that you're going to do when setting up this field rely on a 3 8 inch wrench. However, there's one step that requires a half inch wrench, which is why Andy Mark recommends having a half inch combination wrench, with the other end being 3 8 inch, in their list of recommended tools. This is the step when you're adding the churro pieces onto the rest of the bucket assembly, and at the same time you are threading a screw. Now I want to give you a little bit of caution because as you're threading these screws, it may be very tempting to use a drill to make the process easier, but I think that's a bad idea. As you're threading screws, there's a lot of friction and it can be very easy for things to get bound up. And if you're applying too much force using a drill, especially if it's on a high setting, it's very possible that it's going to rip that wrench right out of your hand, possibly hurting your wrist in the process. So please, be careful, and even though it's more difficult, Use your own hands force to actually do the threading for these pieces. Just one more note about the corner bucket assemblies. As you're putting in the bolts to tighten everything together, you may find that the bolts themselves actually bind 
even when the nut isn't on there. So make sure that you get the bolts all the way in before you add the nut and then go through and make sure that the nut itself is also tight. With the sides of the submersible and the corner bucket assemblies all done, it's time to put it all together and tape the field. Once again, make sure you have the latest revision of the field setup guide because a few key measurements have changed. My last piece of advice relates to placing the submersible on the field. Because there are eight plates that go underneath the field to help hold the submersible in place, and only four of them live at the corners of tiles. The other four live in between two tiles, but it's not exactly easy to tell which teeth they should go on. So my advice for you is to go ahead and place the four easy plates on the field first. Place the submersible on the field and use the empty holes that are still waiting for their plates to make a small mark on the tiles where they're supposed to go. This way, you'll definitely get them lined up the first time and you won't have to fight with trying to move those plates after the submersible has already been placed. That's all I have when it comes to setting up the field. When it comes to teardown, you may want to keep the boxes that the samples came in because that's going to be your easiest way to count and make sure that you still have all of them and store them long term in between events. If you have any suggestions for others, please leave them in the comments. And in the meantime, I'll see you at the field.